Turgot here with Radical Body Transformations. I'm here in Winnipeg with an IFBB Pro, and uh, she's also an outstanding person in other ways. I'd like to introduce you to Brittany. Brittany, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, you are an EMT, yes. which is an incredible thing. That must yes. be a difficult job here in Winnipeg. Uh, yeah, it's definitely challenging. Uh, you've got kind of a, a big range of not so stressful to the life or death kind of situation. So it's, every day is different. You're not really sure what you're gonna get into when you, when you start your shift. But well, what attracted you to doing that in the first place? Um, I've always been really interested in uh, medicine and biology, so uh, I was actually looking at nursing originally, uh, but the program, there was a wait list, so I looked at Red River here in Winnipeg and they offered the program. My uncle was also a paramedic in the city uh, of Winnipeg, so I kind of fell into it that way and decided that that'd be a good choice. Well, thank you, of course, for contributing and helping yeah. others. and. You know, now you've become a pro, which is an amazing accomplishment. Yes. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, uh, people are just like crazy about becoming a pro. Anybody that's competing in the fitness, figure, bodybuilding, that's like usually their goal or their dream. Yeah. Uh, so this is something that's happened to you. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about what got you into competing in the first place. So I, uh, I did rhythmic gymnastics growing up. I did it for 15 years. So when I was done competing, I kind of needed something to do. I went to the gym, wasn't really, you know, I was just kind of going through the motions, not really having a goal. I've always had my competitions when I was competing. So um, I needed something to go towards and uh, I ended up coming across Darren uh, on the website. So decided to go, go for a consultation with him and I ended up competing in bikini. So I did that for a year um, and then I, switched into fitness the next year. All right, so you're doing bikini and you've got a gymnastics background. <laughs> what did Darren say when you said, oh, by the way, I've got all this gymnastics background. And he I've was kind of wondering why, uh, why I hid that from him. Not that I was hiding it, but I, I figured it was a good leeway. Um, I wanted something, I, I didn't know bodybuilding at all. I was never really into the, the industry at all, so I didn't really know much about it. Um, I didn't know how much it, how much time it took, what it kind of was all involved in it. So I figured bikini was kind of a good way to, to start, and I feel feel like a lot of people start there. Uh, then I realized after doing, uh, I did one novice show in Winnipeg here, and then I did a, a model search, and I realized I wanted a little bit more of a challenge and a, a different body type. I wanted to look more like a fitness competitor, and I, I figured I had my, my background. And it was a little bit different um, because I do rhythmic gymnastics, or I did rhythmic gymnastics. Uh, I couldn't tumble, and I figured that was a, a huge part of fitness. Whenever you see a fitness routine, you see girls tumbling mm. across the floor, and you know all these really artistic gymnastics skills. And I, I'm like, well, my routines aren't going to look like that, so I didn't think that I could do it. Uh, but I actually ended up finding Oksana Grishina, who is the fitness Olympian. I found her routine, and she was a rhythmic gymnast growing up as well. So mm. I kind of found her routines, and I was I was able to kind of. Uh, see that it, it, I can be successful with a routine without having to do any back handsprings and back tucks and, and doing a different style routine that people would actually understand and appreciate that style of, of fitness routine. So for those that don't understand, can you explain a little bit what the difference is between like competing in bikini versus competing in fitness? Um, fitness is more, you want more of a figure look. So you, you do your two piece round, uh, like you have the, the same poses as figure. Um, and then you have your routine part of it. So as a, a national competitor in Canada, your routines are about a minute and a half. As a pro now, they can go up to two minutes. Uh, so you do your routine to music, you have a theme to it. Um, and as bikini, obviously you do, uh, it's a different style of bikini, your poses are a lot different. It's a lot more uh, flowy and, and a little bit more open for, for your posing. So it's a little bit of a different style. So that's pretty much what I find the difference between the two. Now, do you have an artistic side to you, or what, what do you do with that aspect of it? Because obviously you have to come up with some sort of routine and, and something that's pleasing to the eye and interesting and entertaining. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm creative in that sense. Um, I, I struggle quite often with trying to really decide on a theme because I've got so many ideas and so many things that I want to do, but I have to try and figure out something that's fitness related more 
to get away from rhythmic gymnastics. That's kind of my, my comfort zone, so that style. So I have to try and find stuff that people will appreciate in, in a different way and, and I understand it as a fitness routine, not as a rhythmic gymnastics routine. So I have to kind of find it that way. Now when you started, did you think about becoming a pro or did you just want to get on stage? I just wanted to be able to get on stage. I, yeah. I mean, I, as a beginner, that's kind of where you start, right? You would never, I mean, I didn't even really, I think, understand what a pro was. I didn't understand the whole uh, industry. Um, I went to the Toronto Pro Show my first year for the, the uh, model search, and I was completely overwhelmed by the industry. I, you know, I, I was like, I'm like, I didn't think I'd ever be able to get on a stage like that, and I thought it was so, so far gone, and it turns out that was only a couple of years away, so. Yeah, so now you're going full circle. You're going to be yeah. competing in your first pro show yes. at the Toronto Pro Show. Where you first started, you did a bikini model yeah. search thing there a couple of years ago. And now here you are, you're going to be on the pro stage. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about that? I'm I'm nervous and I'm excited and I, I think it's going to be a, a really interesting opportunity for me to, to learn more of, even about the industry and, and about fitness and um, about myself. I, you know, I, I have absolutely no idea where I'm going to stack up with the, with the pros. I mean, the, they're people that I look up to. I'm probably going to be starstruck in the backstage, right? They're people that I, I've been watching and I, I've been watching for the last couple of years to try and find out what fitness is and, and try and, you know, figure out where, where I fit into all of that. So I think it's going to be probably a little bit overwhelming, but I, I'm really, really excited for the opportunity to, to show what I have to offer and, and hopefully the judges will see it and uh, I'll, I'll do well. So what are some of the things that you're working on in order to prepare? Like every, you know, you got to take one show at a time, regardless of what it is. It, you know, you're on stage, you're on stage. So I obviously want to make improvements to my physique. Everyone, no one's perfect. You, you know, you can always find your flaws. So you always want to build on certain things and, and improve that way. And same thing with my fitness routine. I'm still learning every single time I, I make a routine, and you know, every time I get choreography done, where I'm always trying to tweak things and trying to build and build better skills and be stronger and be faster, more you know, more flexible. You, you know, you're always trying to be bigger and better, and you know, I don't think it it ever ends. And that's kind of the, the exciting part is that you, you can always challenge yourself to go further. So. Well, I'd like to introduce your coach, who happens to be Darren. From Freak Fitness. How's it going, Dan? Good to see you again. So this is one of your outstanding pros. Yes. Um, another a local who's turned pro mm -hmm. uh, under your guidance, and uh, and your wife is a pro as well in yes. the same category. So, uh, how did you guys? Well, tell me about when you first heard this that she had gymnastics and could do that. <laughs> she was competing in bikini. Well, actually, with. I mean, she did tell us that she did have gymnastics background at first. And I think it was just, she just kind of mentioned it on kind of on the side. Like, oh yeah, I, I used to do gymnastics, but it, she never really made a big deal about it. She didn't tell us she had 14 years experience doing it. <laughs> she just kind of made it sound like something she did for a little while. So when she said bikini, we said, of course. I mean, that's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, she wasn't the most muscular girl when she came to us. I mean, she was, she was athletic, but she wasn't muscular. Um, and she wasn't weight training as much as she does now, but she had a very good look right So like, oh, bikini, I mean, absolutely, let's, let's go for it. And uh, I mean, she took to the train right away. Um, you, you know, she liked the structure, she worked hard. She I mean, comes to her conditioning camp on a regular basis as often as her shifts allowed. And uh, I mean, she was always at the front of the line, always wanting to you know, push harder and, and, and do more. So after the first season, she did well in bikini. Um, and then she did the model switch right after that. And then it's like she, you know, she had mentioned, it's when she came back from the Toronto Pro Show, she's like, yeah, I, th I think I want to do fitness. So like, mm -hmm. of course, Christina and I were like, yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> Christina turned pro in fitness. I mean, yeah. she competes as a figure uh, pro now, but, um, you know, unlike, you know, Britt, Christina doesn't have the gymnastics background. Um, so when, you know, we kind of put all that stuff together and we just kind of said, okay, here's the game plan. Novice, I don't even know what year it was, 2012? Uh, it would have been 2013. 2013. And we're only 2015. Okay. okay. So 2013, she's like, it would have been in the summer of 2012. Yeah. She's like, okay, let's let's do fitness. So knowing that now she needed more muscle, okay, we switched, switched gears, went into off season, uh, mass gaining, lots of food, a lot more food than what she was used to. And she's like, what? Are you <laughs> sure? So it's okay. But again, she's like a freaking soldier. I mean, she never quite, she would, comment on it, but that would be it. Then be like, just, okay, I'm going for it. She trusts the process and, and, and fully executed the plan. 
So she trained all off season, prepared for her first fitness show. She placed second, I believe. Four weeks later, um, because our provincials was after the world qualifier, um, our local association was allowing buys for those people that they felt deserved it to go to a national show. And I believe that's when she won her first national title. Yes. Um, and then she proceeded to do nationals the following summer and she won another national title. And then the following year, yeah. she went to the Arnold Classic, biggest amateur show in the world, placed third against some amazing yeah. athletes. Yes. Huge experience for her there. It definitely raised her expectations, I think, for herself. And I mean, I believe the next show is you turn pro. Yes. Yeah. Then she uh, won nationals in Edmonton. And uh, I mean, it was a real cool, I mean, it, it's that moment backstage where she had come back from off stage with all her yeah. trophies, and it was <laughs> we just kind of stood there like this, going, "Yeah, it happened." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we haven't looked back since. And I mean, she keeps on improving. I mean, she may be a pro, but she still—it's like every show, it's like her first show. Mm -hmm. She just keeps on wanting more, keeps on pushing herself, learning new skills, getting stronger, putting on more size in the right spots. And I mean, she's gonna—I mean, she's very. Oh, how would I put it? It's like, yeah, she's like, I want to do the show and see how I stack against, you know, all the other pros. Yeah, routine-wise, fine, but her physique is going to be right at the top. I, I know that for a fact. I mean, I've seen a lot of the other fitness pros. They, they don't have what she has. She's five foot ten, and she is rock solid from head to toe. And she's got the V taper. I mean, it's all there. The routine, it's a matter of what the judges are going to want that day. But like she said, there's pros that do have the rhythmic gymnastics background. I mean, when she does it, she's got flexibility that very few people can even. I mean, I can't even, I don't even want to try to show. I mean, the stuff she can do, it's like when we do a conditioning camp, I ask to do exercises and it's like, I just say, whatever you guys do, don't look at Brett because she will do completely something that you don't even understand. So, um, you know, she's got everything there. So it's just, uh, and then no slowing down. I mean, she's just gonna keep on climbing. So it's pretty exciting. I mean, it's huge. Now respect. being tall, is that, Harder or easier? <laughs> I don't know. I've only ever been tall. She's doing. <laughs> I've, only, I've only ever been tall, so I, I'm not sure. I would say for some movements, it definitely is. Uh, it's a lot harder um, when you have to hold up a 34 inch leg. It's a little bit harder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, I, I also feel like it's an advantage too, right? Because I can stand out and and my movements are a lot bigger and a lot. You know, I take up a lot more of the stage in in, in a different way. So. I don't it's know, more it's, dynamic. I mean, yeah. She does something with her legs. I mean, it, it really looks like it takes over the stage. Yeah. And it, anything that's flexible, the longer the limb is, the more it's it just the more impressive it looks. And I mean, even though she's tall, you see her on stage. She doesn't look tall because she's got she's got the, the the muscle shape and the size and the and the depth there that there's no longer lanky here at all. She just makes everyone look tiny. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is an advantage. You, yeah. you know that, right? I mean, yeah. it, it, it's 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 going to give her an advantage. And in the pros, there's no heights. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's the same height, or yeah. well, the same the open yeah. class, right? Right. Yeah. So uh, I, I think she's coming in with a big big advantage. And I mean, she's doing really well promoting herself on social media and stuff. I mean, she's got a huge fan base. I mean, she's still getting used to the fact that she'll go to a gym somewhere in a whole different city, and people come up to her and say, "Are you uh, Brittany?" She's like, yeah, that's me. And then, of course, starstruck and, and all that stuff. And she's kind of like, this is the weirdest feeling ever. But uh, she, she earned it. She deserves it. So, can I say? So, uh, what's your plan for her for the pro show? I mean, obviously, you want her to place well and all that. But uh, what kinds of things are you aiming to take her in in order to? Well, I mean, uh, the routine. I really. I mean, the routine. The only part I can help help with her is. Even though I was able to show her how to do an L sit, I'm pretty proud about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's my only contribution that way. Uh, but I can make her stronger and faster, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. what we use the off season to do: is get her stronger, get her faster. And every year, I mean, she can agree to this. She does get stronger and faster. Her routines get easier. So the conditioning element as well. I mean, her routines will not never tire her out. Because it's wow. sorry for starting the shit that I have her doing mm -hmm. makes her routine a joke. Yeah, and yeah. that's the whole goal, right? Yeah. So, I mean, she's gonna have the conditioning, she's gonna have this, this, this speed and power. Physique-wise, I mean, I don't think she needs to get a lot bigger, just more refining her physique. Because she's still young in the, in the pro world, uh, not just like years competing, but yeah. she's never done it, for, but even she's still young. She's only 20, 
seven, eight? Eight. Eight. Just turned 28. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, she's, I mean, she's still growing into the muscle that she has. I mean, because how much muscle have you put on since your first bikini show? Um, before a bikini, I weighed in, I think the lowest was 139. And I said, I usually will step on stage about 160. Yeah. 160. Yeah. yeah. Like that's, that's 30, like that's, that's, and that's 2013 was her first show. Yeah. So that hard work right there. I mean, you can't, can't beat that. So. Absolutely. And it's going to be really exciting to uh, demonstrate some of these moves and to see you actually on stage yeah. uh, performing for the, for the first time. Uh, so that is something a little bit different. Usually when you're getting somebody ready from, it's simply from an aesthetics point of view mm -hmm. competing. But with her, you actually have to do some performance things. I, I love coaching fitness competitors um, because there's so many elements to, to take into account. It's almost like being like a master control of some big ship because you have all these different rooms and compartments that you have to balance off to make sure that everything hits just right. I mean, for her, she could never cut her water because she needs to, her muscles to perform at their best is to do a routine. Yeah. But at the same time, we have to make sure she's dry enough so <laughs> physique round that she's showing everything off. So it really is a challenge, but um, we, we got a formula that works. I mean, yeah. you know, if she didn't work as hard as she did, it would be a, probably a little more challenging. But, you know, I, here's the plan and I ask her if she any questions, she knows, no, I can read. <laughs> I mean, that seems to be her answer all the time. It makes my job easy. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, the, the proof is in the results. I mean, she's, I mean, in fitness, the lowest she's ever placed was second. Yeah. And that could well, be argued. third at the Arnold's, well, which okay. was the international. National-wise, yeah. she's never placed lower than first. Yeah. So, at national. So, yeah. it's, uh, she's obviously got what it takes. So. And I understand that now you're looking at possibly changing careers and uh, yes. taking, you know, this uh, title and everything that yeah. comes with it. Yeah, I, I make, I'm actually making a big move. I'm going to be moving to Victoria, BC. So um, I am going to be leaving the paramedics behind for uh, for now. Uh, the system's just totally different out there. Um, I know Winnipeg. I grew up in Winnipeg. So to know the location where you're working it makes a, a big difference. So different system out in BC. Um, so I'm actually going to start personal training training so I'm gonna kind of start building a client base out there and trying to help people in a different way instead of life or death it could be <laughs> you know, quality of life, quality yeah. of life. Yeah. 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 well the medical community's loss is the fitness community's gain so we're excited to see your routine and and for you to demonstrate some of what you do because I know I certainly can't do any of that stuff, so <laughs> <laughs> I can appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, we look forward to tracking your journey and seeing the, the finished product in, uh, in uh, June. So, all right, let's get to it and uh, let's see some of your routine. Hi, this is James Herga with Radical Body Transformation. Got a special treat for you guys today. I'm bringing in the youngest uh, female uh, figure pro to ever turn pro in Canadian history and her name is Azaria Glaim. Uh, the thing with Azaria is, at age 20, she became pro. So already, uh, you know, she's got an amazing physique, uh, she's got amazing determination, and you know, with the show, we have people at all different levels. Uh, so with somebody like this, how do they improve? Well, there's always a new goal, a higher goal that you can set for yourself. So even though Azaria has already reached this goal at such a young age, there's still improvements that she can make. And we wanna to talk to her and first of all, get some feedback of how she was able to achieve such, such success, but also more to the point where she's gonna go from here. Now, one thing about Azaria is she's got a very strong mental attitude. She's a very focused individual. And if you ever read her social media, you can tell she wants to go to the very top. She wants to be the Olympia champion. And you know what? Some people could say that's ridiculous to set goals that high. Well, this is somebody that set goals to become pro by the age of 25 and actually exceeded her goals and became pro uh, younger than that. So without further ado, here is Azaria. Hi, Zaria. Good to see you again. <laughs> see How you, you doing? Good, thank you. Okay. So, now, for the average person out there watching you, especially uh, women, they may look at you and say, wow, this woman has an amazing physique. 
you know, she must, um, you know, never question herself. She must never have any obstacles she has to face or whatever. But not true. <laughs> not true, okay. Well, uh, tell me, what are some of the things in your past that you might have battled that you had to overcome to get to where you are now? At 15 years old, I overcame anorexia. I actually almost died from being so sick and skinny. And I used that to become better and I used that to grow because I was at such a bottom. Well, what did your weight get you, if you don't mind me asking? What, did I weigh? Yeah. 69 pounds at 15. 69 pounds. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Okay. And what was it in your head that made you think that your body wasn't good enough? Like, um, growing up, it was not the best of environments around me. So it just what I felt was normal. Mm. It was the norm. Were, were you trying to attain something? I don't know what it was. I think it was just a really bad and negative mindset. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you had mentioned that. Um, You've mentioned to me in the past that you also had depression along with that. Depression, I think everyone suffers some sort of depression at some point. Uh -huh. um, dealing with it every two weeks was not fun, so I had to change what I was thinking. <laughs> now, I have a theory, um, just my personal theory, that a lot of people are any, on antidepressants now. Right. And I'm thinking, a hundred years ago, people didn't have any depressants, no. but they were also very active. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, they used to have to cook their food, they used to have to go hunt their food, they'd have to farm their food. So all day long they were active, which would re right. release endorphins. I actually never used any antidepressant to overcome my depression. I just used my activity, fitness. Exercise. Yeah. So maybe the pharmaceutical companies don't want to hear this, yeah. but I, 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 I truly believe if people were more active, we'd have less depressed yeah, people out there. Yeah, a lot of issues. Okay, so how has exercise helped you with your mental state of mind and overcoming it's anorexia? It's clear. It's, um, my mind is a lot more focused on who I am actually, not just what I'm thinking. So. Now, I know that you set your uh, sights high in terms of goals, which is great. And uh, I know you want to become Olympia champion in your category. And I also know that, you know, you have in your mind a certain physique that you want to create. And that you did since, I mean, how old did you first imagine? I was about 11 or 12. And I had a vision in my mind of what I wanted to look like. And I've actually become what I look like now, so. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, what did you base this uh, visualization on? What was the model? Was it people that you saw on TV or in magazines? Was it comic book heroes? Was it something that you just created in your own artistic mind? What was it that um, formed the image that you wanted to become? My mother, she was a bodybuilder, so she had us four kids, and then she was a competitor as well, and Larissa Reese, she was my first, uh -huh. my first vision of fitness. <laughs> So seeing your mother obviously inspired you and made you believe that this was possible to achieve. Absolutely. Now, um, kind of sticking along those lines, uh, I think a lot of people defeat themselves mentally. Um, what was it about you that you um, not only had a vision of what you wanted to become, but believed that it was possible? I personally don't agree with having any boundaries. Anything that you want to achieve in your life, whether it be work, job, um, fitness goals, relationship goals, I honestly think anything you set your mind to, you can do. Yeah, I have to agree with that, and yeah. I think that if everybody, you know, kind of had that kind of mindset, we'd have a, a much better world. Uh, because I think that we have a world where people make a lot of excuses for why they're not where they want to be. And it's unfortunate because, to me, uh, as soon as you see yourself as a victim, uh, you're actually putting shackles on yourself. And as soon as you see that, it may be hard to face that you are where you're at because of your own decisions, but as soon as you figure that out, you realize you have the power to become what you want and you have that control. And a lot of people don't want that control, but once you have that control, you realize that you can create your own destiny. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to figure that out at your age is remarkable. Thank you. So, all right, now, 
The purpose of this show still is transformation and you're still working on yourself. Uh, when you go to the gym, what is it that you're trying to achieve? Um, you know, obviously this is your first uh, pro competition that you'll be entering. You know, you, you mentioned you might be doing the Arnold, you mentioned um, you might be doing the Toronto Pro Show or, or some other pro show. And clearly until you get up there, it's hard to know exactly what the judges want. So at this point in time, are you uh, trying to maintain or are you trying to build something? I feel like we can always be growing, so I just want to make sure that my adults are nice and round, got a nice V taper, tight waist, nice quad sweep, tight glutes, but always improvement, always. Okay. So, um, well, we can work on uh, some delts today and, and maybe some arms and do some things to show the audience how you built what you've got so far and how you continue to build. And uh, of course, uh, your coach has been a big part of your success as well. Um, so, so let's bring in the uh, pro maker, the uh, freak maker, Darren. <laughs> good, how's it going? Good, good. <laughs> so, you know, uh, Darren is very proud, I'm sure, of his area's success. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> now, uh, you obviously believed in this girl. Um, however, you know, it is in the hands of the judges at the end of the day. Uh, what were your thoughts when they announced that, you know, she had won the overall and was going to get a pro card? Uh, well, um, I think they cried. <laughs> yeah, well, it could have been a tear or two. Uh, leading up to the, the Nationals, I mean, she had won everything leading up to that. And it was in a span of about, what, four weeks? Five weeks. Yeah, so, um, you know, it was kind of quite on a, on a streak, so leading up to this, you know, we had everybody telling us, oh yeah, she's going to turn pro and all this stuff like this, and it's almost like you don't want to, you don't want to say those words to jinx it, stuff like that, but I mean, she never rested on that, those laurels of already winning, I mean, she just kept on training harder and harder, and even though she was hold, trying to hold her peak and improve her peak, she just kept on going, there was no slowing her down, um, but yeah, when, uh, when, when we heard her name, I think I, May have broken uh, her fiance's <laughs> arm with a high five, <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was a pretty big celebration because I mean she uh, the whole crowd. we didn't we didn't believe yeah the whole crowd erupted absolutely because it was in Edmonton yeah. it was uh, in her hometown and and um, uh, when she, typically once once uh, the name is announced she's got her trophies and a whole black load of stuff because she'd won her class the perfect score and then she won the overall the perfect score and she came off stage and normally she would go backstage. Uh, that wasn't good enough. Uh, <laughs> she went uh, through the curtains off stage and kind of just waved to us because we were all sitting together and we came all running down and big group hug and stuff like that. So it was, pre it was pretty surreal. Uh, I definitely. Brody's pants the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was pretty surreal. Definitely one of the highlights of my coaching career for sure because it was uh, clearly she's got it. Right. Um, not only physically but more importantly mentally. Um, you know, being so young, you know, turning tw uh, pro at 20, now she just turned 21. Uh, you know, and on social media, hashtag road to the O. I mean, that's, you know, thinking big. That's 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 how you achieve big things. If you don't think it, yeah. it's not gonna happen. And if you think I'm just gonna, I wanna do well in my first pro show. No, she wants to win her first pro show. I'm yeah. not, not, she's not gonna be upset if she doesn't win, but she's gonna aim that high. Cause you gotta, tr you gotta think like that to achieve that. Yeah. So if the judge doesn't agree that time, well, I mean, She's proven she has something there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you don't win three shows in a row with a perfect score every time. Um, and these were all, you know, high-ranking judges. Some of them were pro judges on that on that panel. So, um, you know, the, the, her time will come. You know, her time will come. There's no doubt. So, absolutely. Now, uh, so she's got the condition she's got at the age that she's got. As a trainer, where do you go from here? How do you? Uh, keep, first of all, how do you keep her motivated? Not that she needs to be kept motivated, but let's face it, when you achieve a high level of success, it's hard to set that next uh, goal. Maybe she could set that goal in terms of the contest, but setting the goal in terms of her physique, how, how do you keep her on top of her game? And also, what do you challenge her with to still attain from here? Well, we kind of use the keyword limitless. Yeah. Um, I mean, there is no limits. We want to see how far we can I mean, there's no reason why she can't be setting the bar. You know, she's a, an inspiration, motivation to a lot of people already. So let's just keep it going. Yeah. Um, you know, 
she just wants, it's just more of a curiosity than anything I think right now is to see how, how good we can make her. I mean, she's young so she may lack a little bit of maturity physique wise, a little detail and stuff like that. So um, a little more shape, a little more depth or physique. That, I mean, we're just continuing to build on what she already has. So we're just gonna make good even better. Yeah. That's awesome, man. You know, sometimes in life we have the opportunity to uh, not only help ourselves, but help other people. So I wanna give you an opportunity. Um, there's a lot of young women out there, 16, 13, you know, these different ages that had some of the troubles that you probably faced. I mean, I, I know of girls that, you know, battle uh, anorexia. I know of girls that are cutting themselves. There's all kinds of, of troubled teenagers out there. So, especially to the women out there, you know, you turned your life around. You turned this negative energy in. You know, obviously you had a lot of passion, let's call it, and you were able to turn that passion that was kind of going down a negative route and you were able to turn it into completely positive. Um, what can you say to the girls out there, uh, you know, recommendation-wise, if they look up to you, uh, you know, to go from a real low point to, hey, you know, you can really be what you need to be. You don't need to get down on yourself. I feel that to have a strong and healthy body, you have to have a strong and healthy mind first. So you have to believe that God's never gonna hand you anything that you will not be able to get through and never, ever, ever set boundaries for what you're capable of. Okay. Now, let's say you are, you know, there is a 16-year-old girl out there and she doesn't have the confidence that you have now. She looks at herself and she looks in the mirror. She's not happy with what she sees. Um, is there anything that you can tell her? Because I know that one of the things I've always tried to tell people that are young are, you know, certainly when I was in high school, there's little things that seem to matter a lot that really like 10 years later or whatever, it's like a lot of the same people you don't even, you know, interact with or have anything to do with. These things don't matter. But in the moment, you know, somebody's teasing you or something's going on and it's like you feel like your whole life is ruined. Um, do you got any advice on that? What like, I feel like, I always visualize myself like up in an airplane and when you look down and you see people and we're all this big and mm -hmm. semi trucks that are so big in person are this big, like no problem is ever too large and that's how I see it. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So to all you girls out there, no matter what happened, I mean very few people get down to you know, 69 pounds in terms of anorexia let alone being able to turn it around. So no matter where you are at life or what obstacles you face, uh, Zara, you um, were out, you had to go out of your home at what age? 16, I've been on my own since. She's been on her own since her 16. So you can become a Zaria. You can become, and it doesn't have to be something physical. You know, if you want to become a lawyer, you want to become a doctor, you want to become whatever it is. It doesn't matter where you come from. You can turn that energy into a positive, so. Um, and just be the best you, like, don't try be anybody but who you are, be the best version of you possible. Excellent, I think that's fantastic. Now, our friends at Advanced Genetics would like to hook you up with some stuff. Awesome. So, we got your... Matchy, matchy. Your, your camo <laughs> bag to match your camo pants. <laughs> and green shirt to match wow, thank green. You. Shaker cup, you can always use one of those. Always. They got uh, creatine, muscle builder stuff. I don't know, Darren can explain this to you. He okay. knows more about this than I do. And uh, some crazy pre-workout stuff. I took this stuff. Um, I couldn't sleep I couldn't sleep for like <laughs> three days, but it, wor it works. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you like pink, but we got pink too. I wear pink. So. All right, cool. All right, Thank so hook you up with this stuff. And um, how let's uh, train some arms and some shoulders. Let's do it, thank and you. And show how it's done. <laughs> All right. This week's POW is GP3 Evo, the world's most effective muscle building formula. Experience the synergy of three. Countless scientific studies show that they work. Creatine, beta alanine, and L-carnitine. More importantly, they've been field tested. Taken separately, they're effective. When taken together, they work exponentially.
to build slabs of rock hard muscle, increase strength, and shed body fat in record time. Only GPG Evo delivers all three in a full dose mega stack with a unique advanced delivery system, the GP3 Evo Synergy System. Field tested, science proven. Oorah! Oorah! James Hergott here, Radical Body Transformations. And we are here at the uh, Ontario Provincial Bodybuilding Championships. This is the biggest provincials in all of Canada. 600 competitors are here to compete. It's just insane. And um, you know, very high level competition. We're backstage, we are all access. It's Mad Max back here. There's people tanning up, there's people that are the carving up, there's people water depleting, there's people that are just like getting psyched up to go out on stage and we're following a lot of these stories. Now some of the stories are people that are going to be entering the uh, provincials for the first time and some of them are people that we've been following that have done regionals and uh, they made it through and now they're going up to the next level. So for them if they make this, if they place top five, they get to go to the nationals and if they go to nationals, they get a chance to get their pro card. So it's a big deal, very competitive event, and uh, lots of excitement in the room, and we look forward to capturing all of this. James Hergott here, Radical Body Transformations. And we are with Brittany Kane, and we are uh, backstage of the uh, Toronto Pro Show. This is your pro debut. We uh, just watched your routine. It's just an amazing routine. Thank you. Uh, my first question is, how does it feel to be on your first pro stage? Um, it's a little bit overwhelming, I think, is kind of and, and surreal at the same time. Uh, you work so hard to, to get here, and it's kind of a, it's something that a lot of builder, bodybuilders and a lot of people in the industry work towards is getting their pro card. So to hear the announcer say your name and, and to walk out on stage in front of those judges and with the other athletes is is just an amazing experience. And I'm just super, super, you know, humbled and excited just to be on stage with all those amazing athletes. Yeah, and the, the caliber is incredible, as you would expect yes. from pros. <laughs> um, are there any girls that you competed against that you had looked up to or that you were fans of before you yeah, became a pro? Yeah, absolutely. Um, actually, the, the girl that was that came out right before me, Ryle Graber, she was a huge inspiration for me right when I when I started. You kind of when I was new to whole fitness and not really sure if I could even do it. I you know you sit on YouTube, you go YouTube a bunch of videos and watch routines and stuff, and she's definitely one that I've that I've watched for a couple of years now. And so to actually be able to meet her and uh, stand next to her on stage was amazing for me. Like it, it was an absolutely amazing experience. Yeah. Incredible. And I, I was uh, before I, I witnessed the show, I was worried about your height. A lot of these girls are just as tall. There's a lot of tall girls in this. Uh... There is actually a couple of girls that are just as tall. So I was actually surprised too, because uh, even at nationals, the the height cutoff is quite short, um, mm -hmm. and a lot of the girls are, are old artistic gymnasts or cheerleaders, and you know they tumble and they they're a lot shorter. But once everybody gets their heels on, you kind of as long as your stature, if you know your body with the muscle and everything like that, you, you kind of all balance out eventually. So. So how did it feel? I mean, obviously you're thinking about your routine and what you gotta do, but how did it actually feel to, you know, get your badge, get your, you know, walk out there, finally know that you're gonna be walking out on that pro stage? You know, every competition is a competition, and I don't wanna say that they're all the same, but you have to go into them with the same mentality, right? A stage is a stage, you, you've worked so hard to get there every single time they compete, so, no different, but completely different at the same time. Uh, it was just amazing to be in the room with all these people that you look up to and you see on, you know, especially with social media being as big as it is, you, you know, you look up to them and you're sitting in a room next to them being like, I'm stepping on the same stage as them. But, you know, it's it's an amazing experience. It was something that I'll, I'll never forget. So I'm, yeah, I'm really, really overwhelmed, I guess, by the, the whole weekend. It's incredible. Now, what, you know, between like the physical changes you've undergone and also I'm sure you've improved in terms of your skills and everything, yeah. what, what improvements have you made that you're most proud of? Um, 
Physically, for, so I mean, because we have two parts, we, we've got our posing part and the routine. So for the, the physique round, I've, I've had Darren and help me, like my coach helped me bring up my physique. I hadn't had an off season in a really long time. So to actually be able to take a little bit of a break and kind of go back to the drawing board and, you know, work on some of my weaknesses and bring them up. I think I was able to bring a, a lot better balanced physique. Um, I feel like I was a lot leaner and I, you know, especially I noticed in my, my legs and my, my waist were a low, my waist was more narrow, my legs were a lot more balanced. So that was an improvement that I was really, really excited about. Um, as far as my routine, every time that you're practicing skills, you kind of, you know, you learn how you can do that skill with your own body, right? So I've got really long legs, so I need to learn how to do those skills with my long legs. You kind of learn, you know, tricks and, you know, ways that you can do it. So for my routine, I never did anything upside down having a rhythmic gymnastics background. So I did, we didn't do handstands or, you know, really like walkovers or tumbling or anything like that. So I did a headstand. So I'm pretty proud of that one. It, you know, it seems something very simple for somebody who's done it since they were a kid. But for me, that's a fear that I got over because I was very, very scared to be upside down. And, you know, I physically I can do a walkover or a handstand. It's, that's not the problem. It's just the mental part of it that I have to kind of get over. So to actually have done a headstand and actually stuck it on stage, I'm, I'm really proud of it. Um, tell me a little bit about your routine first, why you uh, selected that as your routine and uh, also using the batons, why you decided to incorporate yeah, that? Yeah, these are actually, uh, they're clubs. So in rhythmic gymnastics, it's one of the apparatus. So I knew as soon as I got my pro card that you can use props. As a national CBBF competitor, you can't use any props. So I kind of had, I felt like I had this, you know, a big tickle trunk full of, you know, apparatus that I could use. So I could use a, a rope, a hoop, ball clubs, or a ribbon. So I wanted to pick something that was a little bit more, um, you know, solid like a, a ribbon can you know you can get caught up in it a ball it can roll away so I wanted something that I could kind of work with a little bit better um, really when I'm kind of thinking of an idea I, I sit down I have I actually still to this day have a, a big notepad on my computer and I anytime I have an idea of a routine I'll throw it down there if I hear a piece of music that I like I'll write it down and just kind of keep a list of things and I, I just narrowed it down to something that's more my style I'm not I'm not a super happy cheerleader kind of you know that that style isn't me, so I needed to pick something that was a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more, uh, more me, a little bit more flowy. So as soon as I heard the 300 Rise of the Empire theme, Spartan, I, I absolutely fell in love with it. So that's kind of what I went with. Very cool. Well, we, uh, you know, look forward to seeing how you place. But you know, just even getting here is an yes. incredible achievement on its own. Thank you. So we got some other stuff to give you some swag. Awesome. So. Uh, from Popeyes, we have some supplements oh, and stuff. Oh, perfect. And uh, we've got Be Up Bars for you, sugar cookie, and you can eat those whenever you're kosher like you. Yeah. <laughs> I might have one tonight. <laughs> awesome, so thank you so much. So congratulations, and we'll very catch much. up with you later. Perfect, thank you. James Rogat here, Radical Body Transformations. I am backstage with Azaria. Hi. Long journey, we first met up at the Olympia and uh, you had just won your pro card. Yes. And this is your pro debut. Yes, it was. And you placed third, which is an incredible achievement, especially at your age. Tell me how you feel right now. I feel amazing. It's such a privilege to be on stage with so many athletes that you always look up to. At my age, I'm grateful for where I am and where I'm going. Yeah. Now, I noticed that we want to interview you before and you said no interview yet. I get the impression, maybe I'm wrong, you tell me, that you're a very focused individual and you like to be focused on the task at hand. Am I right about that or is there something else? I was else? in my zone when you approached me, so I just wanted to do it after all the show was done so I could give you all my attention. Yes. Very good. Yes. Now, I, I also noticed you're not on Facebook anymore and different things. It, am I also right in the fact that when you get ready for a show that you cut out that tunnel vision going into it? Yeah, I'm not um, drawn or into any kind of drama and I found like Facebook for me, it just brought something that I didn't need. So that was all that was. So obviously this is a new level for you. Um, what goes through your head as you're, you know, warming up and everything and before you walk out on stage? I was just praying that God was with me and that the angels would carry me on stage and I could shine and do the best that I could possibly do. 
That's and when what I pray for. And when you're actually on stage, what's going through your head? Well, it's funny because you don't see anything. All you feel is the light, and all I think is about peace. Because then it keeps your nerves down, and therefore you look better in your presentation. So I literally just go, peace begins with me, and I just say that over in my head as I'm on stage. And where did you get that expression from? My sister taught it to me. Oh, yeah, it's nice. like a meditation to calm your nerves. So peace begins with me, and it just calms your whole soul. Now you went into the morning show um, and you know they moved you around and obviously it looked like you were a contender. Um, did you make any changes or anything as a result of how you were placing this morning that uh, changed your approach going in tonight? No, I just followed my coach Darren and did what he was told me and we did what we'd done previous shows and that always seems to work so we're just going to keep progressing. So we know you want to be on the Olympia yeah. stage. So what is your plan? I know it's early, but do you plan to do more shows right now? I want to do as many shows as I can just because I have the opportunity and I'm young and I want to get my face out there. And I feel the more you do, the more that you're seeing, the better chance you have at earning your spot. Because I think you do have to do some time. It's not just all done right there, right? You have to earn, you have to put in the work, put in the time. So I want to do the Dallas Pro. That's in two weeks and then go from there. I like to focus on one show and then think about the second. I don't like my focus to be on two places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how did it uh, feel to make your debut in Canada? It was unreal. There was a lot of bumps in, like, in the road on the way here because we were supposed to do Edmonton, then New York, and then I got sick. And then we were planning to do Toronto, which my coach was here, you guys were here, my family's here, so it was just perfect. Uh, I think it was a great show for yeah. you to do. It's a big show. And I think you know it'll prepare you for the Olympia stage, Absolutely. which I have no doubt you will make. Thank you. Um, uh, your coach Darren was telling me a story about there was a girl that uh, flew all the way here to see you. Yeah, I forgot where she was, but it was far away. And then she actually gave me a present. She took off her necklace and put it around my neck. And it's um, an evil eye, and it guards you from any negativity or jealousy of that sort. And it's an eye right here, and it's blue. It was a gift from her. Wow, and how did she hear about you? Uh, through Instagram. So yeah, she just followed me on Instagram. How, how does it feel to uh, have fans now and have media covering you and all this kind of thing? It's amazing. I walk down the streets and there's people that aren't even into fitness. Like I posted today on Instagram with me and a, an older lady. She wasn't into fitness, but she loved the look of it. She shook my hand, she touched my muscles, and people are just like infatuated by what we do. And I love to aspire to those kinds of people. That's what I live for. Well, you have an uh, incredible energy about you. I think that carries through and the judges see that. And I get the impression from, you know, kind of like you said, I think it's, they have to see your face a little bit more yeah, because absolutely. it's like you're brand it's new. Brand and they're like, new. who is this girl? And I just started competing last summer and now yeah. we're here, right? Yeah. So it's brand new. It's all new. It's all fresh. It's all a journey. I, I almost wanted to ask you, um, you know, what it felt like not to take first place because this is actually the first time you didn't take first place. But you know what? To be on this level yeah. and to take third, that's like a first. I mean, I don't even know if that's been heard of to be that young and going into your well, first show. To be on a pro show. stage at 21 in general is amazing. To take top five would have been amazing. Top three is amazing. Like the athletes are unreal. So it was a privilege. Now, I know you're very focused and you don't really care about the competitors and stuff like that, but you were on stage with Natalie. How did it feel to be with Natalie and all that kind of thing? It was good. It was nothing, anything different. Right. Because I'm still just in my zone. But yeah, it was great to have another Freak Fitness alongside. <laughs> yeah. Now, you've worked with Darren and Darren's taken you from your first show all the way here. What would you like to say about Darren? I don't think you could say enough good about Darren. There's, he's amazing. He's very personal. You feel like you're the only person that he's training because he puts so much effort into you. And that's the same that goes for everybody that is in the team of Freak Fitness. You feel very, very supported in every kind of way. Anything that you need done, anything you need changed, anything. He's like a little counselor too. He's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'd like to uh, hook you up with some bars here. Thank you. We're sponsors, so Thank you're you. allowed to eat those whenever your coach Perfect. says. Yeah. Thank you. Sugar cookie. Sugar cookie. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you, guys. So a big congratulations Thank to you, you on everything, and we know that there's big things in the future it's for you. It's just the beginning. Tip of the iceberg. 
Darren, so wow, man. amazing. <laughs> Zaria, first yep. show, takes third. Crazy, man. Yep. How do you feel? I don't even know what to say, man. I'm speechless. Um, I mean, like we had talked earlier, you know, there was uh, Jennifer Strobel was kind of like the, you know, everyone was saying that she's coming back to, to win uh, win the show again, and, you know, she did. Uh, but as there's a new kid on the block, for her to get third in her first pro show is unreal. Um, did we expect it? No. Did we hope for it? Yes. Yeah. And I mean, that's what you always train for, right? Yeah. Just living the dream, man. Yeah. I mean, what can I say? I mean, uh, you know, a friend of mine, Scott, I mean, he, he spotted her in the gym and he said, you got to train with Darren. Connected us, and I mean, here we are from first show to pro, top three pro show in less than a year. Well, you know, it's it, unreal. Man. It, it's crazy. Uh, I, I, you know, it, it, I haven't ever seen it before, and uh, it's, it's, it's pretty rare for Canadians to be able to do that. Yeah. It, 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 it's happened a, a few times, but keep in mind, she's but, only but, 21. But, but I don't think it's happened at that age. I, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Not at 21. I mean, she's, lack for a better term, still a baby. When you got people yeah. that have been competing for more than 20 years that she's been alive that she yeah. competed against today. So this is just the beginning. I mean, we have a goal now, um, Olympia by 2017. Yeah. I think she's on the way. Well, yeah. I think we're going to beat that. But I, I, I'd be shocked. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the thing is that, you know, I can say this. I mean, looking at the lineup, I could have seen her being first. Yep. I, mean, I got to imagine. Oh, absolutely. That, you know, she hasn't paid her dues. She hasn't been around. But I, I, I'd be hard pressed if they were just judging it just based on like they, they didn't know any names or whatever. And right. They just had three yep. people up there. Yep. I, I would have. I think she'd take it. So you know. I, I, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm a little biased, biased yeah, right? Yeah. I want to say she should have won too, but. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she uh, she did everything right. Yeah. There's not one thing we would have changed for this prep. No, her, not a uh, thing. her package looked uh, amazing. This is the best ever. She put on a little more size than when she turned pro back in June. And uh, she came in, I would say, even a little more conditioned the last time. She was about five or six pounds heavier, so it was quite a... I mean, as someone as, as small as her, that's quite a dramatic yeah, difference. Yeah, for sure. But we put it all in the right spots. Yeah. Legs, back, shoulders. Her waist was still a little... It's a tiny little that thing. Is, uh, yeah. Size of my, my forearm. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and you know this is just going to light a fire. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Deep, you know, bigger and brighter than, than it's ever been. So, you know, we're going to be heading to the Vancouver Pro Show in four weeks. So... What do you think about, like, her mental approach? I, I haven't talked to very many people who have the focus that she has. I mean, honestly, when she looks at you, you can just tell there's a certain determination. Going that little, there. you know, eye of the tiger. You know, yeah, yeah. Borrowed from Rocky, but... Yeah, she's got that that something, that focus, that, but she's mature for her age. Yeah. You know, she's, again, she's got that X factor. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just something that's there. And, I mean, she, she proved it on one of the biggest stages in the world, right? Yeah, and uh, I, I don't know if you can hear her, but she was uh, saying lots of nice praise for you. So. I tried not to listen because I didn't want to get emotional. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm pretty proud of her. Yeah. Pretty proud of her. Yeah, well, I'm proud of every proud of everyone yeah, that, yeah, that could be here today. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, one thing I think all the competitors, at least that were on our show, that we yep. signed up for you, is they all look fantastic. So yes. No matter how they play, absolutely. What they do, you bet. they came in shape. And, absolutely, uh, man. You know, yep. You know, That's what we do. Genetics always plays a part. You know, opinion always plays a part. But of course. I mean, you can't control what the judges say. You can't control who else is going to show up. So in a show like this where all the bodies look good, yeah. you know, like you said, top three, top five, really anything, any of them probably could have won and yeah. nobody would have complained, yeah. right? But is there being a new kid on the block? She's just, they just, they just now, now they've just found out who Desiree Glame is now. Yeah. And now word's out. Yeah. Right? So now we're very curious to see what's going to happen in the next show. Absolutely. So. I, I'm excited to see the future. Yeah. All right. Well, congratulations. Thanks very much, my friend. Big win, man. Looking, looking, looking forward to more. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. And that concludes our look at two ladies who turned pro at a young age. Brittany, who never even expected it and just put in the work. And Azaria, who expected it from the day she started. It just goes to show the power of determination, goal setting, and believing in yourself. But let's not forget how important it is to have a great coach like Darren in your corner. It's no accident that Darren has turned so many people pro. There is an art to competing, and then there is an art to winning. 
Next episode, we'll meet more of Darren's amazing competitors and more radical body transformations. <laughs>